All right, guys, hopefully you, you know, you zip through this problem, you realize your love of algebra is reignited here, um, your passion for the sport of algebra has been fueled and served. There's, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this. Here's one possible equation. Hopefully you recognize that if this is a 90 and this is a 90, these two have to be parallel lines. If they're parallel lines, these two angles, as I would ask if I was in class, or what kind of angles? Oh, duh, they're same side interiors. Same side interiors have to be supplementary. That's one potential equation you could have on there. Not the only one. Um, another potential equation you could have is that 2D has to be equal to 3C plus 10. Same deal, you got parallel lines here. And these angles, of course, if you look at them, I would say, what kind of angles are they? Oh, yeah, they're corresponding angles of parallel lines and you could set them equal. The other one you could certainly do is you could check these and go, oh yeah, Mr. Hess, those are linear pairs and set up a third equation on there. You only need two of those three. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one you go with. There's the third one on there. 3C plus 10 plus the C plus D adds up to 180 because you have linear pairs. You know, working through that is sort of up to you how you attack that. Um, I'm not going to show all the steps on there. It's just sort of algebra manipulation. Hopefully you got C is 30. And if you got C is 30, then you end up with D being 50. And if you plug those in and check, this angle has to be 80. Plug the 50 in here, double it, you get 100. 100 plus 80 works. Plug in the 30 here. 30 times 3 is 90. 90 plus 10 is 100. So yeah, this is 100. This is 80. So they're linear pairs. That works. This is 80. This is 100. That works. And 100 equals 100 on there. So you only need two of these three is kind of the key. I'm just kind of showing you, sometimes you're given more information than you need. Sometimes the teacher is so generous, he's giving you extra information. I, you know, I, I appreciate your thanks for that extra generosity. Um, the hard part is, is realizing you only need two of these. You know, maybe this is set up for substitution. If you divide both sides by D, maybe you go with elimination on there because it's sort of in standard form already. It's up to you. Um, the method you choose should get you there. On the bottom of your page is the final thing on here, and you do not want to end up like these kids right here. Um, you can see what those kids are doing. You do not want to jump to conclusions, and that what this is really that's what this is really getting you to try to be careful about. On your paper, you've got three lines, a right angle here and a right angle here. Um, in here, you're talking about angles one, two, three, four, and five. Well, there they are. One, two, three, four, and five. Make sure you got them in the right spots. And then the three lines are M, N, and P. I don't think we need the transversal to be named on here to do these. So the question is, can you determine if each conclusion can be made? You're just trying to see, is somebody going to jump to this conclusion, or is this a valid conclusion for each one of these? And then a justification of why, because we love to justify why. So a good time to pause, maybe try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these questions. And you might not do them in order. I highly recommend when you're taking a quiz or a test or homework even, you kind of skip around. You do them in a different order that sort of flows more naturally. But you can. If you want to do them in order, go for it. Hopefully you look at the first one and go, yeah, M and N are parallel because of this right angle box on here. These are all 90s, these are all 90s, and therefore you could get any one of the reasons really that we talked about throughout the chapter. You could say, well, if that's 90 and that's 90, same set interiors are supplementary. If that's 90, then that's 90. Alternate exteriors are congruent because of linear pairs giving you the other 90 on there. A whole bunch of other reasons. This is sort of the concise way to get it. The transversal is perpendicular to both of the parallel lines, or both of the lines on there. Second question on there, M and P, are they parallel? And I'm hoping you just looked at this and said, well, that's a right angle, that's a right angle, that's who knows. Don't jump to the conclusion that this has to be a right angle on here. This is only going to be true if, if you knew one of these four right angles on there. So that one is just sort of not enough information. P might be, but P is, I put it's free to move on here, it's free. It could be 89 or 89.9, you wouldn't know unless there's something given on there to lock it in place. And then the comparison between N and P, same deal. You don't have enough information. You know nothing about P. So you can't draw a conclusion on there. Don't just assume it is just because it looks like it is. 
Then you get into these last few and they're kind of the same thing. Hopefully they're easy for you. Uh, one congruent to four. Well, yeah, they would be. And the reason on that, you could say they're both right angles, and there's a theorem from the last chapter, all right angles are congruent. Or you could just recognize they're alternate interior angles of the lines you recognize were parallel before. I'm hoping you use these reasons just to kind of review these in this section. Three and four, I would ask the question in class, what kind of angles are they? And hopefully you'd say, oh, they're corresponding angles of the lines that we concluded before were parallel. Two and four. A lot of you will jump to this conclusion, oh, they're congruent. They're only congruent if we could conclude that P was parallel to the other lines. So that one is, again, a conclusion jump around there. Don't jump over there. Don't look like these kids. Looks like fun, but it's not as much fun when you're taking a test and you're doing that. Um, second to last one there, two and five are congruent. Of course they are, Mr. Hess. They're vertical angles. Oh, there's P moving for some reason right now. I don't know why it did that at this time. Of course, you got two and five are vertical angles. That's always going to be true. And the last one, one and five being congruent. One and Again, we don't know anything about these angles. They could both be 89.5, and they might look like 90, but there's no, no valid conclusion on there. Um, might be 90, might not be. This is not on your paper. If you've got some room and you want to squeeze it on there real quick and try this one, it will help you um, not only on the quiz but on the, you know, on the homework, I think, tonight. There's one like this again where you've got this transversal that's sort of bent in the middle. It's a little different. The angle I'm giving is given on this problem on here. And then there's a relationship. The top little angle here, this acute angle, is y, and the bottom one's y plus 10. So it's not symmetric. In other words, the top and the bottom are going to look different on here. If you're, and you might want to pause it if you want to do this on your own and try to see if you can do it by yourself. If you remember what we did the other day, we took that 60 and we cut it into two pieces. And it would only be bisected if this was symmetric, if this value was the same as this one, if everything on the top was the same as the bottom. And it, it, this intersection point would be sort of in the middle of the two parallel lines, which is clearly not the case in my drawing. So 60 was cut into two pieces. We don't know how big they are. Maybe it's, you know, 15 and 45. Maybe it's 31 and 29. Cut into two pieces on here. Think about how you can label these two sides or these two sides. I'm going to go for the top part of the 60 on here. If this is y, this is also y. And if this is y plus 10, this is also y plus 10. You can easily justify yourself a reason on there for both of those. These are alternate interiors. These are alternate interiors. And you sort of just stumbled into an equation on here. 60 is equal to the sum of y and y plus 10 using the angle addition postulate, adding those adjacent angles. So if you add those two pieces together, if you understand alternate interiors, you can get these labeled. And if you understand angle addition, you can add those two together and have a nice new equation. Subtract, divide by 2, and you end up with 25. So hopefully that, that's a problem, you know, a little review problem for you, get you ready for the quiz on Friday as well as I think there's one or two homework problems that will help you on. That's the assignment due on Thursday. Um, boy, I better be back on Thursday. If my kids are still sick, I'm going to bring them with me and spread the sickness around to school or something. Um, hopefully I won't be sick. Um, hopefully this helped you guys out. Feel free to rewind, re-see anything. Um, have a good day.